Okay, Grant, where are we? What are we doing today? We are now leaving our place and heading down to Acrisure Arena for a little bit of hockey. Hockey in the desert. We love hockey in the desert. Yay! Well, more and more people are certainly getting to know about it, eh? Yeah, it's finally starting to grow. We've got a good fan base. We're, at, we're probably averaging, give or take, 7,500. You have been here in, what, we're at Palm Desert, right? We were in Palm Desert. And how long have you been here? I've been here going on 14 years now, give or take. You have always been known as quite the golfer. How much before having this new gig, which maybe tears you away a little bit, but how much would you play golf in a given year? Well, COVID was really good for my golf game. I think I played 260 some rounds the first year and was probably pretty close to that the second year as well. So I think last year I cut it back to about 130 or so. <laughs> cut it back to 130 or so. Okay, that's someone who loves to golf. I do love the game. I, I can't lie. Actually, I like the game. I love hockey. So yeah, it's a good combination. I was going to say, right now, you do get a little bit of both, right? I get lots of both. You've got an old teammate of yours who's going to be at the rink today. Yeah, some guy that wore 99. Yeah, that so. guy. Uh-huh. So tell us what he's, he's part of a pregame ceremony, I think. He is. Wayne's going to drop the puck today. So it's always fun to have him in town. We're looking forward to seeing him. You guys were both involved with hockey in the desert before, too, when you think of Arizona. So in that respect, you've seen hockey played here before, but you know now here in California, what, what do you think? The audience, is it a lot of Canadians? Do you have a lot of snowbirds or a lot of just locals who are getting to know more about hockey? We've got a nice mix of both. I mean, we've got obviously lots of Canadians in the desert during the winter, but at the same time, Steve and Troy and Shannon and the group went out and they've marketed the team very well where we're getting a lot of local fans as well. So the game's growing in the valley and they're gonna they're working on kids programs and such so that the game continues to grow and because that's gonna be our fan base in the long run. So as a player you were very used to your game day routine and now as a broadcaster are, are you getting used to a, a whole new game day routine as well? Well we kind of use the term broadcaster lightly. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have my own little routine. I like to get to the rink early just because it's a comfort zone for me. It was when I played. So if I'm still talking about hockey and we're working a hockey game, I still like to be there early. So Acrisure Arena, they managed to build from ground up in 18 months. So the fact that they could accomplish that and part of why the team had to play the first 22 on the road is it wasn't quite ready yet. So it opened in December and it's been running ever since. And the team has been quite good. No, the team's phenomenal. If you look to your right, that's lovely Aquasure Arena. Oh, I was going to say, it's like an oasis in the desert when you see an arena springing out of. <laughs> and there it is. That is Aquasure Arena. So this is our practice rink. Practice rink right here. This is gorgeous. So when we broadcast, we're in that corner over beside the whiskey bar. Good evening, everyone. It's Hockey Night Coachella Valley. I'm Gina Lamont alongside Hockey Hall of Famer, Grant Fuhr. Hey, Grant. How are you? Good, how are you? You got a whole entourage today. <laughs> Look at you. Okay, so we're here at Coachella Valley Firebirds. How did this all come about, bringing you on board as a broadcaster for the team? Well, when they brought the hockey team here, I wanted to do something with the hockey team. And talking to Gino and obviously with Evan, somehow a broadcasting position came up. So I got talked into it. <laughs> they had to convince you or was it, hey, I'll give it a try? No, it was something, I thought I'd give it a try. It's not the first time I've done it, but I swore I would never be a media person. So here I am. This team, inaugural season for them, and yet they've been at or near the top entire season so far. Yeah, it's a 
been a really good hockey club. I mean, you start 22 games in a row on the road, obviously that's a tough start, but they were successful on the road and they've come home and played great hockey here. So it's a good hockey club. It's a veteran hockey club, obviously, being a first year team and Seattle not having a lot of draft picks. They brought in some good veterans. Ownership went out, may have spent a couple extra dollars, but it's been really worthwhile. And Dan Bilesma is their head coach. Uh, that's a great get last summer to bring him on board. It is. I mean, any time you can bring a coach in that's won a Stanley Cup, obviously he knows what's going on. He knows the, how the game works. He knows what these guys have to do to get to the next level. So he was a great addition. So when you think back to those, the good old days, those Euler days and the, the teams that you were a part of, the dynasty, what comes to mind? Oh, probably how much fun we had. Hey, we try not to call them old days. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but, but no, it's a lot of fun, obviously. And anytime you get a chance to see any of the guys, it's fun to catch up and it's pretty much like we haven't left. What goaltenders do you watch now and think, okay, I like that guy's game? Try and watch all of them, yeah. just to see the different styles now and try and see what they're teaching the guys. And, I like to see how they read the game. And you know, they often say how goaltenders make good broadcasters because you're used to seeing the game, you know, in a whole different way than, than any of a forward or defense would see. Well, we look at it a little differently because everything develops in front of us. And I think that's the big thing is we're used to seeing things develop. So while some people are watching the puck, we're watching things around where the puck's gonna go, not where it is. And hockey in the desert, I mean, when you were growing up right in Spruce Grove, Alberta, did you ever think there would be a day where you would be a broadcaster for a team in the middle of the desert in California? No, I mean, Peter used to bring us here in the early 80s. Peter Pocklington. Yeah, it's for a vacation, so to think that hockey was gonna be here, I think we first practiced here, they had a little rink in the mall that was maybe half size, maybe a quarter size. And we used to think, wow, well, okay, cool, we're going there. Won't be a big practice, so that part was good. But to think hockey would ever come here, no. But to see it happen and watch it go from the ground up is pretty cool. I know it's pregame time for you. I guess we've got to get ready. We're going to see the great one, and then you're going to get ready to call the game. Yeah, we're going to go visit the boss, and then I'll pretend I know what I'm doing over in the booth. <laughs> I love it. Nice to see everyone. Oh, no. Keep going. Hey, Jersey. Oh, nice to see you, Coach. Jersey. Good to see you. He's ready to play. Can you guys skate? <laughs> Size 11. Mr. Broadcaster. Oh, yeah. Hey. Not the media type yet. The dark side. The dark. He's come to the it's dark side. It's a frightening side. Ah. Oh. Good to see you. See, the best part is everybody's tucked in their seats. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Akrasher Arena. Evan Pippick back alongside Hockey Hall of Famer, five-time Stanley Cup champion Grant Fuhrer. What are the keys for the Firebirds for success? I think their biggest key is to start skating. I mean, they were a little slow-footed to begin the hockey game, and. I think if they get out and they establish the pace of the game, that, that's what makes them so good, is they establish the pace, they establish the control, and they've got to get back to doing that in this game. Here comes back, Profacco loses the puck. Archie, shoots, he scores! Ty Conchie gets it off a turnover and ties the game! Yeah, great shot by Ty Karche. The benefactor of kind of a loose turnover in the defensive end, and Karche made no mistake with that, firing it high over the glove side. Down the slot, show with a shot, he scores! And the Firebirds tie it at two. Looks like they're starting to find their legs now. It's tough when you play a night game, come right back and play the next afternoon. So it's gonna take them a little bit of time to find their legs. You're welcome. The Firebirds extend their win streak to five in a row and win today with a comeback victory over the San Diego Gulls 4-2. Hey, it's a good hockey club. I mean, it's fun to be a fan of the Firebirds right now. You get to see entertaining hockey, but you're getting to see really good hockey. And I think that's the key is you create fans by playing good hockey. The games have all been exciting. There's been no real blowouts or runaways. We've kept everything entertaining so far. 
And that's going to do it for us here. Grant, appreciate your time. Glad you got to see your good pal Wayne drop the puck and uh, bring a little bit more of a crowd up here to the, to the broadcast booth. Yeah, we just kind of dragged the little crowd along. I used to having cameras in my face, but we've gone to the media side of the world now, so it's been a lot of fun. For everyone here, I'm Evan Pindick, including Grant Fuhr. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been Coachella Valley Fire vs. Hockey on 106.9 The Eagle. We made it. Ha, ha, ha.